for those of us who are struggling with the idea of you know, I think mental illness isn't really a real thing. I think there's too much emphasis on it. Culturally, there are people uh, who come from different places in the world where they grew up in a reality where they were conditioned to think that mental illness is no big deal. And if anything, people are acting as if, you know, maybe those people are uh, are weak at the level of their mind or those people just need to get their lives together. They, they need to stop being so... Um, I'm trying to choose my words because I don't want to be disrespectful, even though we hear some really disrespectful things. Um, by some people who unfortunately propagate the stigma that mental illness isn't a big deal. It is a very big deal. And we really need to understand how it is that there are people who suffer and they suffer among us. And we have a responsibility as Christians to recognize that their suffering is real and that they need our prayers and our support. And so to simply tell a person, go light a candle and say your prayers, that doesn't remove from that person the illness that they suffer with. So an estimated 22.1% of Americans age 18 and older. So that means literally almost one in five people suffer from a diagnosable mental disorder. In addition to this, four of the 10 leading causes of disability in the US and other developed countries are mental disorders. It's so important for us to understand that when we speak of these kind of numbers, that means that if you take a look around you, literally one in five people around you could be struggling and you might not even know it. It's terrifying to think that so much suffering can be had all around us and we're not even familiar with it. Some more important information for us to understand these mental illnesses can vary anywhere from a person having, um, you know, clinical depression all the way to anxiety disorders, bipolar disorder, schizophrenia. We talked about a person being uh, obsessively compulsive, uh, borderline personality disorder, autism spectrum disorders, post-traumatic stress disorders, psychosis, depression, and so on and so forth. We're talking about a significant amount of illnesses that can affect a human being. And when you take a look at these, it's so important for us to be able to take a step back and ask ourselves the question, am I doing something to support the members of my community, my loved ones, my friends, my colleagues at work, my neighbors, who might be struggling and they're afraid to talk about it? We as Christians have a responsibility to be able to not only pray for them and yes, encourage them to pray, but also recognize that they are suffering and to treat this as something that was extremely important. When we talk about depressive disorders, the, the numbers are absolutely, they're terrifying because approximately 18.8 .8 million American adults or 9.5% of the U.S. aged 18 and older in any given year have a depressive disorder. So we're talking about nearly twice as many women or as men are affected by depressive disorders each year. And these figures literally translate into 12.4 million women and 6.4 million men just in the U.S., so we have a, approximately 20 million people at any point in time in the United States who are struggling from this. How much more in all of the other countries if we were to add up the numbers? Depressive disorders may be appearing earlier in life in people born in recent decades. And why? Because of the realities that we live in, because of the impacts of social media, because we're constantly living in a secular society that is comparing us to others and giving us fake standards. And because of all of this, it adds and the, um, the accumulated stresses that we carry within us become more and more unbearable for so many people. Depressive disorders often occur or co-occur with anxiety and substance abuse. So we have people who are struggling out there and they don't only have one form or one expression of a mental illness, but they might have several uh, different disorders that they're struggling with simultaneously. And many of us are not even aware. Now, this obviously leads us to the conversation about suicide, because over 90% of people who kill themselves have a diagnosable mental disorder. And so when you take a look at that, you begin to realize that because we don't recognize or support or love our neighbors, our brothers, our sisters, our family members who might be struggling with such things, this might actually lead them to consider the possibility that life is not worth living. And there is nothing more beautiful than the gift of life. We know, as Orthodox Christians, the importance of the sanctity of life. Why would we ignore that and let one of our neighbors, our brothers and sisters, our children, our spouses, to lead themselves into this conversation where internally the devil tries to convince them that their life is not sacred. It is not worth living. And, and when they consider that, that is a very scary thing. And if you know someone who has struggled with their mental health and have considered suicide, then you know just as well as I do, that this is something that we have to actively work against. As Christians, we have to have the heart of a person who wants to be able to be compassionate, to co-suffer. Remember, that's what compassion means, to co-suffer with those 
who are struggling when it comes to their mental health. In 2020, suicide was the second leading cause of death in youth ages 20, 10 to 14 and adults age 25 to 34. You think that in our day and age today, that one of the leading causes um, of death across so many different demographical categories of people is suicide. It's not them dying because of the illness. It's not them dying because of a um, a terminal illness that has caused them to no longer be able to receive the medication or the therapy that they need in order for them to recover. But rather, these are people who they said, enough, I want to end my life. The final thing I'll share with you is four times as many men than women commit suicide. However, women and girls attempt suicide one and a half to two times more often than men and boys. This is taken directly from the American Foundation of Suicide Prevention. When you, when you think about these things and when you consider these numbers, it is not right for us to entertain stigmas of uh, they just need to suck it up. They just need to get their act together. They just need to be more focused on their relationship with Christ. And while it is true that our spiritual life plays a huge role in our healing, to suggest that these people should not also be pursuing therapy and potentially even medicinal intervention for the sake of them recovering, this would be foolish for us to not encourage them and tell them that there is hope, that they should pursue different means in order for them to receive the healing that God wants them to receive. 